Hello students, in this video let us be discuss about uh, the next uh, bit of the topic that is phylum platy elements. So, in previous video we discussed uh, three phyla that is first one Porifera, second one Cylindrata that is also called Nidaria and third one is Phylum Tinophora, right? Tinophora, third phylum we discussed, right? So, in this video let us be discuss the general features, general characters of Phylum Platy Elementis, right? So, Phylum Platy Elementis the members belongs to this phylum are called platy elements, right? Platy elements are also called the more commonly called as flat worms, right? These are also called flat worms, right? So, why we called flat worms? Because so the animals are showing the flat body, that is, they are observing as dorsoventrally flat body. See, dorso ventrally means when any animal we consider dorsal side means back side more commonly we can say right ventral side means the front portion right so these are little elongated animals some are maybe short also but they have a flat body which are dorso ventrally flat right dorso ventrally flat means they are flat in this pattern laterally compressed means in this way right so lateral compression both side laterally compressed body we also dorso ventrally little flat we may refer right so some in case of fish right they are laterally compressed body not all are some are right some fish may shows that so laterally compressed body right even some insects also some insects right so those are also having laterally compressed body but here all uh, the members belongs to this phylum are showing that dorso ventrally compressed body. So, that is why we call it as a due to this uh, condition we called uh, commonly called as these phylum the, these members are called the yes, flat worms right flat worms they have a flat body right and it is little elongated also. Some in case of uh, for example, the tapeworm commonly called as tapeworm, but uh, the scientific name is Tinea solium, Tinea solium shows that elongated body, right. So, next uh, planaria is a short, okay, and it is free living also. Uh, let us we discuss now the all characters with example. First, uh, I have taken here the uh, examples. First one is planaria, right. Planaria, it is also called Dugesia, Dugesia, right. So, next one, Tinea solium, Tinea solium. So, this Tinea solium is commonly called as tapeworm its body is like a tape elongated tape okay it's a smaller size but maybe in meters together length okay so these are actually uh, living in the some vertebrate animals right so including human beings even in human intestinal parasite it is so hence we also call it as endoparasites what we call endoparasites right so this is the one example elongated one and it shows the like segmentation, but it is not segmented. Remember it has small units we observed in the animals body elongated body. So, they are called glottids, proglottids right. So, like the uh, term is used there to uh, means uh, they, that may shows the somewhat uh, the head region here head region and head region shows that the somewhat uh, structures called hooks and uh, suckers and this is what the elongated body right. So, here you can see the this type of structures, but they are not appears very clearly. So, these are the structures which we observed that it is called glottids. We referred it as the different uh, names we are giving here. So, that is called glottids, right. So, they are referred as proglottids, 
right proglottids. They are called the yes, proglottids right proglottids immature matured these are matured somewhat these are immatured matured and gravid. So, in this way they are referring s yes. and here in this region we may also observe that the s yes, suckers there is a presence of suckers right this is what the we can say that is suckers and there is a two rows of hooks around this structure in the anterior region we can say that is hooks hooks and sometimes we also refer it as mouth but here no clear mouth is observed right and uh, these are the special structures which we observed hooks and suckers are observed in endoparasites not in all uh, members we may not observe they are found in endoparasites so understood tenia soli solium is also called tapeworm because the body is flat and uh, elongated one remember next uh, the one more example i have taken here uh, fasciola hepatica fasciola hepatica is a scientific name of uh, liver fluke so which is found in the liver of a uh, ship okay usually which is also endoparasite so instead of intestine in with uh, this is tenia is there in the intestine intestinal worm it is and a flat worm remember and fasciola hepatica hepatica means is usually related to liver liver fluke so it causes the disease in a ship right and uh, planaria is the free living so usually it is uh, found in moist soil or aquatic we can say right it's a planaria is free living free living means it is not parasite so it is found in the moist thing uh, usually in water or uh, uh, maybe in soil which is existed planaria and uh, even we call it as dugesia right so it's also flat worm very small flat worm and uh, tenia is elongated here and liver fluke is also short one liver liver fluke may show that the somewhat uh, dorsal and ventral surfaces we may observe that in this form right this is what the liver fluke right so here ventral sucker may be present suckers and mouth we also call it as mouth okay so in this way there is a structure simple flat worms these are yes let us we study the general characters right general characters or features of this uh, silent features of the platyal menthes first i'll take the they are called flat worms as you know they are their body is dorsoventrally flat right next uh, they are endoparasites they are called endoparasites most of the members are endoparasites because they are present inside the body of host okay present inside the body of host hence we call it as endoparasites understood endo means within inside endo parasite parasites means depends on other animals so that's why we call it as endoparasites usually they are even uh, we not call it as some are blood parasites for example mosquito leech we can consider they are sucking blood externally right so they are sucking the blood of other host animals they are called exoparasites so we may also discuss in that group right see first uh, endoparasites means you remember there may be other parasite endoparasites may be present but uh, these members also endoparasites you remember uh, they have a specialized structure called hooks and suckers so usually what happens so these animals are present in the intestine intestine so the intestine it will hold the intestinal uh, uh, tissue so these hookers will hold the intestinal tissue so they will not easily shed off or rid off from the intestine they are remains existed okay maybe glottids may be cut and remove okay so usually uh, as a biological process okay so uh, these uh, immature glo glo uh, proglottids and uh, mature glottids may be they are developing right so and uh, even there is a regeneration power is also there so lost part is uh, uh, the lost part may regenerate or regrow so such a feature is also there for this uh, uh, members 
and uh, you remember this is the endoparasite right hooks and suckers are the special features of the endoparasite but may not be observed in planaria because it is free living okay it's not a parasite so the their members may be aquatic or they may be parasitic or free living we can say right so next one the bilaterally symmetrical the animals are showing bilateral symmetry bilaterally symmetrical body is present right Bi bilateral means as you know so when you cut in one plane so it will be get two equal holes in the all cases almost all members are showing the s yes, bilateral symmetrical remember this one bilateral symmetrical next uh, all members of uh, platyal mantis are showing triploblastic these are called triploblastic animals because all three germ layers three germ layers three germ layers means outer ectoderm ectoderm middle mesoderm and inner endoderm yes endoderm all these three germ layers are there hence we call it as triploblastic animals right so little highly developed rather than these three because they are diploblastic these are the first uh, triploblastic animals in the invertebrate right next one almost above uh, from platyal mantis to uh, up to vertebrates we can say that triploblastic only uh, what we discussed in previous uh, uh, video about three phyla they are diploblastic right <coughs> next one the acelomates still stilom silom is not developed because uh, not completely there is a development of uh, uh, gastrovascular uh, what you call uh, sorry the in, uh, intestinal canal right digestive tract is not completely developed here so incomplete digestion is there so that's why we can say that the acelomates there is no coelom body cavity is absent right body cavity is absent here they are called acelomates coelom is absent right coelom is absent hence uh, the animals are called acelomates right next one <coughs> next uh, organ level organ level of uh, organization see here organ level organization we observed so even not a complete system is formed but organs are formed here okay there is a presence of eye like structures suckers hooks so such specialized structures are formed here even flame cells right so such special uh, uh, organ are formed here hence we may refer it as these animals are showing that uh, they are exhibiting organ level of organization body organization is organ level right so in previous we observed the tissue level and uh, uh, simple organization which we observed it's a one step advance that is we can say that organ level organization next one digestion about digestion usually digestion may be absent we can say but here so how it happens digestion usually in uh, uh, parasitic forms the surface of the body may get absorbed see so absorb nutrients from host absorb the nutrients from host there is no uh, uh, even uh, there is a branched uh, canal branched system may be present so pharynx and mouth may be present here so it may be branched okay so it may get branched here right digestive system may be said to be branched okay and uh, usually they will absorb the food nutrients right absorb the nutrients from the host because already they are in the intestine so of uh, vertebrates vertebrates in uh, vertebrates intestine already digested food is available so they will absorb that uh, from its body surface only there from their body surface only they can absorb the food no need, no need of uh, uh, any specialized structures to digest whatever it is consuming right so uh, they are uh, from the their, their their body surface is able to absorb the nutrients hence uh, digestion is said to be incomplete so mouth like structures may be formed in some members so this is the ventral sucker we can say or uh, sometimes we refer the mouth here okay so the mouth may be present but uh, that is not like a uh, higher animal mouth right there is small opening we can say but ns is absent here hence digestion is uh, incomplete digestion is incomplete right next uh, there are specialized cells for the excretion one of the important process that is excretion so that structures uh, cells are called 
flame cells, what we call flame cells. This is the unique and uh, identification character of uh, these uh, uh, members that is platy elementals. Platy elementals are represented by presence of flame cells or also called uh, solenocytes, also called solenocytes, right. So, these solenocytes or flame cells are involved in two important functions that is one is excretion, another one is osmoregulation. As you know already excretion, excretion means removal of nitrogenous waste that is called excretion, right. So, that excretion is also done by flame cells and one more function that is osmoregulation. Osmoregulation means water balance of the body, okay. Water how much uh, adequate amount of water should be present in its body. So, that is managed by uh, these flame cells right that is called osmoregulation right the water regulation we can say right. Next uh, uh, the sexes about the uh, reproduction sexes are not separate right they are the we can say that bisexual or monoecious right both sexes are present in the same animal uh, there hence we call it as hermaphrodites we also refer it as hermaphrodite sexes are not separate and uh, sec, uh, the sexual reproduction is takes place even sometimes a sexual type of reproduction is also takes place because in planaria. So, in planaria what happens here? So, this is the if for example, this is the body, this is the body of planaria. So, here it may be cut into number of pieces right. So, this can develop the lost parts right that is a high regeneration power due to presence of this ability the capacity of regeneration of lost part is known as regeneration right. So, that is a way of uh, sexual reproduction by this also they can reproduce themselves right. So, that means the <coughs> develop uh, see the even sexual reproduction is by producing the gametes of the same animal can produce the gametes right male and female gametes are produced and by that uh, the uh, actually sexes uh, and uh, uh, fertilization is internal here, fertilization is takes place internally, fertilization is uh, internal and uh, there is a formation of zygote and uh, the and uh, uh, larval stage the different larva are there, different larval stages are there here. So, due to that we can say that uh, it is a indirect development, development is said to be indirect, development is indirect here right. So, these animals are showing the this type of characters that is uh, one of the important character here. Uh, regeneration ok, uh, the they can regrow their lost part. For example, so here it may become two parts, two parts see. So, it, this animal may get a two part. <coughs> so, what happens here? So, it can develop the remaining part. For example, this part can develop uh, this one and this part will develop uh, this one. This part can be developed by this animal right. So, means two divisions if it happens here. So, what happens the this is anterior portion this is posterior portion. So, for this posterior portion remaining this portion is developed right and for this portion the remaining tail portion or what we call a posterior portion is developed by that it is become two animals. So, this is a kind of uh, yes what we call a, uh, a sexual type of reproduction right. So, in this way also reproduction by sexual as well as asexual reproduction. So, usually sexes are separate as I told hermaphrodites we can say and this is the important property by which uh, asexual reproduction is also takes place that is regeneration ok power of regrowth which is lost ok. So, that is what the regeneration <coughs> once again you look at this one the all uh, points are very important here for uh, to this phylum and uh, they may be asked you uh, usually we can expect here uh, 5 marks question ok or maybe write 2 characters any 2 characters like a question may be expected from this uh, phylum. So, remember the uh, yes, examples and their common names and these points right. So, uh, we will discuss the uh, next phylum in uh, next uh, next phylum in next uh, video. Thank you students. Thank you.